Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Lee Techner. I'm uh, currently Vice President of Clinical Research for Cubist uh, Pharmaceuticals in Lexington, Massachusetts, and I'm going to tell you about our poster today, which is uh, a summary of the results from our Phase two Clinical Development Program for CB5945, a peripherally acting mu opioid receptor antagonist, which is currently in development for the treatment of opioid constipation in patients with chronic non-cancer pain. Uh, essentially, uh, this is an area that we have been doing research in for about uh, 12 years, and I think the important thing to note here is that the use of a peripherally acting mu opioid receptor antagonist really addresses this problem at its, uh, at its physiologic um, center. In essence, opioid agonists are uh, n uh, notable for binding to mu opioid receptors within the enteric nervous system, and a as a result, they disrupt normal motility which leads to opioid-induced constipation and associated uh, other symptoms. In the phase two program, essentially, we enrolled 212 patients. And the study design is, as you see, the patients underwent a two-week, if you will, uh, baseline placebo run-in period, then a four-week double-blind treatment period, followed by a one-week placebo run-in. The two studies evaluated two doses and two different dosing regimens of CB5945, a 0.1 milligram given twice daily and 0.25 milligrams given either twice daily or once daily. The primary endpoint was the change from baseline in weekly average spontaneous bowel movements over the entire four-week treatment period as compared to placebo. However, important secondary endpoints also included the number of SBM, the proportion of SBM responders, the proportion of patients with spontaneous complete bowel movements, an important secondary endpoint, and the amount of rescue laxative use. Safety was monitored uh, not only with uh, standard format, but also we looked for evidence of any CNS penetration, looking at uh, adverse events, opioid consumption, pain scores, validated withdrawal scales, and uh, lab test vital signs and ECGs. In addition, in this study, we incorporated a recently developed patient reported outcomes instrument that we've been working on for about two years. That instrument uh, is, is termed the Corgis or Chronic Opioid Related GI Symptom Scale, which is designed really to capture some of the other symptoms that are very bothersome to patients uh, with this condition, things like abdominal pain, abdominal bloating, etc. Uh, the results, uh, the population is, as one might expect, uh, around fifth decade, primarily white. Um, males and females, a little higher proportion uh, of, of females generally uh, mixed in these two studies. Uh, I think the thing that's uh, really always staggering to me is the morphine equivalent total daily dose, which generally ranges uh, at or around 200 milligrams. And the primary pain condition was back pain. Most of, this patients had their, uh, most of these patients had their OIC for about three to seven years. The results uh, for the primary endpoint are given here. Uh, we were pleased to see a very nice dose response. You can see uh, ranging from placebo all the way up to the quarter milligram dose, uh, 2.46 all the way up to just about five spontaneous bowel movements per week. The primary endpoint was actually the difference in the change from baseline between the active group and placebo. For the 0.25 milligram BD group, that was just about two spontaneous bowel movements, significant at the 0.0003 level, very robust. Also a significant result for the 0.25 milligram uh, QD dose regimen, however not as robust. Importantly, when we look at the responder analysis, we see a 30% increase in the proportion of patients who met the responder definition of greater than or equal to three SBMs per week on average, and at least an increase of one SBM over baseline for three out of the four weeks, and that was significant uh, at the 0 .005 level. Uh, the safety results really, uh, uh, oh, before we move on, uh, importantly, uh, an increase in the proportion of patients uh, with um, 
uh, an SCVM frequency uh, of at least over uh, one. Uh, you can see the dose response here uh, ranging from one to 2.75. Uh, also highly significant in the change from baseline versus placebo at 0.0013 for the quarter milligram uh, BID dose and uh, just reaching a significance for the QD dose as well. Uh, the safety profile was uh, comparable between placebo and uh, CB5945 in these studies. I think what's important to note is the GI tolerability profile is very comparable to placebo here. And I think this is the challenge that many of us face uh, working with these types of compounds in this condition, finding that balance between clinically relevant efficacy and GI tolerability. And I think uh, one of the nice things about CB5945, based on its inherent characteristics, including its PK characteristics, it may be more amenable to restoring normal bowel motility in this population without crossing the line uh, between a favorable GI a tolerability and in essence, intolerable GI side effects. So that's a, a brief summary of, of our uh, phase two program results. Uh, as we've announced before, we'll be moving into phase three development uh, by the end of this year.